Karina Bent from Benfica TV. We are live. So I want to ask what is the expectation for the game and what, what, are you, um, what are you looking for in this game to surprise Benfica? What are you going to do to surprise Benfica? <laughs> I don't think it makes sense to give my tactics and my game plan away, but um, we, we come here in confident uh, mood. We've started the season ever so well. This is a game that we're really looking forward to, but at the same time, it's a, a huge challenge because Benfica, uh, fantastic team, you know, really strong technical players. They have a, a manager with huge experience at this level, so we know it's a big ask, but um, as I say, we come here in a good place and we'll do every, everything we can possible to try and get a positive result. Okay, next please, thank you. Hello, um, I want to ask you if you saw the last match of Benfica and uh, what do you think that you could uh, uh, do? Uh, what did you learn about the defeat of Benfica in the last match? And what is the player that, you, that worries you more in your uh, game for tomorrow? I don't think we have enough time to talk about the, the, the strong Benfica players because every player has his own strengths, you know. I think to play for Benfica, you have to be a, a top player. Um, they have talent all over the pitch. Everton's obviously a Br Brazilian international. Nunez up front scores goals, a very mobile centre forward. Um, you know, they've got German internationals in there as well. So every player comes with different strengths. Um, we, we did see the last game uh, against Boa Vista, but it's not a game that we'll focus too much on. I think every team. Um, during a season can make a mistake or maybe not play to their level. We, we will look at the, the two group games more and Benfica have shown that they're an excellent team, very strong, defensively organised but also have very talented players in the final third. Um, but every team has uh, some weaknesses and, and some problems and that's what we'll try and exploit. Uh, you told me uh, a while ago that you have to be very respectful, very respectful to the um, to the Benfica in this case. Do you think that respect is the key of the success? As Agafa said, I think that uh, Benfica is a very good team, you know, and of course that we have respect. But I think uh, that in every game when you come in and you have respect, that that's very important. If you don't respect uh, the other team. That's not good for you, so uh, I don't think that we gonna don't respect them, you know. Of course that we respect team as a Benfica, but as I said, you always need to respect team and that's it. Um, focusing in your team, uh, what do you have to do in order to overcome Benfica in a match like this, especially away from home? I think we need to... I think we need to have big respect for, for Benfica, but at the same time have no fear. We need to play the game with confidence and belief that we have good players as well. Um, we, we, we need to have a real strong base defensively, our organisation and be close together and work ever so hard. And then when we win the ball uh, and when we gain possession, we need to carry a threat and our dangerous players that we bring to Portugal need to try and execute to help us create and score goals. Well, I think we come into it in, in confident mood. Obviously, started the season ever so well. Um, we've got majority of the squad available and fit and well and ready to go. So we, we come in a good place. Um, but we've got big respect for Benfica. They've got talented players all over the squad, players that are worth an awful lot of money. Um, they've got big experience in, in, in European competition. I'm sure they're still hurting a bit from not qualifying in the Champions League and um, I'm sure they'll want to react from that and go all the way in this competition. And, um, you know, you can see why they're certainly one of the favourites. We've also got a manager who's got big, big experience, uh, is a successful manager as well. So it's a tall order, big ask, but one that we want to give it our best shot in. But just generally in terms of the COVID situation, Stephen, how confident are you that you're whole squad are mindful of their responsibilities just now because obviously we're in a very delicate situation with everything i'm sure you appreciate i think we've covered the, the COVID situation mark on, on many occasions i think you know that we we've been working ever so hard at rangers to make sure we're, we're covering all bases and educating all the players um so 
you know, that was reiterated once more again this morning and uh, we move on and look forward to the game now. Hey Stephen, can you just, first of all, give us a squad update and then secondly, can you just uh, give us your thoughts on the fact that you obviously you played Portuguese opposition twice last year and acquitted yourself quite well. Does, does that give you sort of extra scope for optimism ahead of this game? Uh, just to answer your first question, we, we, we're, we're fully fit in terms of health. You know, we've had no injuries or no one's missing from, from the weekend. Um, so that's good news. Um, in terms of our experience here, you know, last year in, in Portugal, we can certainly tap into that experience and try and use that as confidence, take confidence from it and, and use it as a belief going into tomorrow's game. But it's a different challenge, a different team. Um, you know, Benfica have started the strongest in terms of the Portuguese team this season. Um, so it, it, it's a huge challenge, it's a big challenge, but for sure we're going to have to try and find a performance that was of the level of Porto and Braga if we've got any chance for sure. Obviously the players are, are getting used to playing behind closed doors, but is it an extra challenge the likes of tomorrow night where you're playing in this enormous stadium? It must feel very surreal for them. I don't think it'll feel surreal. You know, we've, we're here now at the stadium, the players are having a look around, getting used to the, the environment where they're going to be playing tomorrow, I think. You've got to use that as as motivation. It's it's a world class stadium, a fantastic place to play. The pitch is in in great shape, um, and these are the places where you want to come and play. I think it's a big shame. I think some of the players, or all of the players, and myself, quite gutted that it's not going to be a full house because, um, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful place to come and play football. Um, but it is what it is. We we're used to playing behind closed doors now. Uh, I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. Certainly in the near future. So. We just have to get on with it and give it our best shot. But we've just walked around the place now and it's a fabulous place to, to come and test ourselves. Hi, Stephen. Ali Deboy from the Go Radio Football Show here. Um, Benfica haven't lost at home in the Europa League. Is that an exciting challenge for you? Yeah, I think records are there to be broken. Uh, I think that goes to show the size of the task tomorrow. Benfica are littered with uh, fantastic players, international players, you know, Brazilians, Germans, Portuguese, the... Belgium internationals, Argentinian internationals, they're littered with superstars that are worth a hell of a lot of money. But, you know, that just uh, gets the juices flowing even more and it just makes you want to try and um, get a positive result even more. The players are looking forward to this game. Um, we've started the, the, the group stage very well and we want to try and build on that with, with, with a positive result tomorrow. We, we've talked a lot about the, you know, the, the upside to having so many options in your squad, but when it comes to a big game like this, is it a bit of a challenge for you to try and you know, juggle the squad and, and keep everyone happy when everyone will be so desperate to play in a game like this? No, I think everyone's professional in the squad and understands that you can only start with, with 11 players. Uh, the good thing is you have the opportunity to use five subs, which is different from previous years. I understand everyone wants to play, um, but I know my team and, um, you know, I'll reveal that tomorrow and I'll, I'll go with a team that I think is capable of getting the results on the day. It's horses for courses. Just because you're not playing tomorrow doesn't mean that I don't rate you or you're not a fantastic player. It just might mean that, you know, I want certain players or want to play a certain way or a certain game plan that suits certain individuals rather than others. Hi, Stephen. Um, just wanted to follow on to that point David made about playing behind closed doors. Um, I just wondered whether you've noticed the difference in terms of how the game pans out as a away side and joined onto that. Um, how beneficial is it that you're able to communicate with your players on the park more clearly? I think it's a lot easier to, to communicate. Um, that, that's certainly a positive. You know, you think about some of the atmospheres that we play in back home at, at Ibrox, it's very difficult to get full messages on, especially to people on the other side of the pitch. So it's certainly helpful to get messages on. Um, but, you know, I, I, I haven't noticed any difference in terms of opposition teams. Um, it is different, it's unique. Um, it, it, it's not as enjoyable or as exciting to, to play in these atmospheres, that's for sure. But we, we've, got, we've got jobs to do and it is what it is. Everyone's in the same boat and... We have to get on with it. We we thought there might have been an opportunity to play in front of 5,000 or maybe 20 earlier on in the week, which isn't the case, which is a shame because, you know, I actually feel for the players, you know, we've done ever so well getting to this stage of competitions and you come up against teams like Benfica. The players should be able to play in front of 67,000 people tomorrow and it would be a, a top experience for their development.